Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to design round robin arbiter. This is one another kind of arbiter which is widely used in digital designs. So let's get started. So first we are going to see what is an arbiter and what is the need of an arbiter in digital designs. Then we are going to see its applications and examples, the advantage and disadvantage of round robin arbiter. Then we are going to implement the Verilog HDL of round robin arbiter. We are going to synthesize the designs and simulate it using a Verilog test bench. So here you can see that there are four CPUs which are trying to access a common shared resource which is memory. The memory can be accessed only by a single CPU at a time. So in order to enable this mechanism of accessing the memory by a single CPU at a same uh, sing, single CPU at a time, we need some additional hardware to implement this feature. The additional hardware is nothing but an arbiter. So here we are going to use a round robin arbiter where the four CPUs will get access to the memory one by one in a round robin fashion. For examples, if all the CPUs are accessing, trying to access the memory at the same time, then they will get access one by one. For example, first CPU 0 will get, then CPU 1, then CPU 2, and then CPU 3. Here, one another important point to note that this arbiter basically implements fixed time slice. What does that mean is, every CPU will have a predefined fixed time to access the memory. So the round robin arbiter designs looks like this. It will, it will have a clock signal, it will have a reset signal and it has four requests. And it will, it will based on the request and the round robin algorithm, it will grant access to one of the requesters at a time. So the round robin scheduling algorithm will looks like this on startup of the device or once the device is out of the reset, the request 0 will get the highest priority, then request 1, then request 2, and then request 3. After request 3, the priority will, give, will, will go to request 0. And it will basically follow this structure. Now what are the applications or examples of this round robin arbiter? As we discussed, when the multiple processors are trying to access a common shared resource, we need an arbiter there. The another example is in routers where multiple users are trying to compete for a switch. So these are some common examples where we need the arbiters. The advantage or disadvantage of the round robin arbiter. So the advantage is since the shared resource is allocated uniformly to all the requester and hence it does not lead any of the requesters to go for starvation. Unlike the fixed priority arbiter when the highest priority requester is frequently requesting the common resource then the other requesters might go into the starvation condition. So that is not the case in round robin arbiter. Round robin arbiter makes sure that each and every requesters get some time to access the memory or the memory here is the shared resource. The disadvantage is basically the advantage in fixed priority arbiter becomes a disadvantage in round robin arbiter where all the requests are requesters are treated equally and we cannot give preference to a specific requesters. Now the spe specifications of the round robin arbiter which we are going to implement in this video are it is going to take four input which are four requests 
and is going to output a single grant in the form of one hot. And the round robin algorithms will be the requester 0 will get the highest priority, then the requester 1, requester 2, requester 3, and then it will repeat to requester 0, 1, 2, 3. We are going to use the EDA playground which is a web based application to code the design and synthesize and simulate it. The EDA playground has inbuilt open source tools like EOSIS for synthesis and Riveria for simulations. So now let's open the EDA playground and synthesize and simulate the design. So I have basically coded the designs round robin arbiter with fixed time slices. And we will go through these designs and we will understand and then we will synthesize and simulate it. So now let's get started. So the round robin arbiter will have clock input, reset input, three request and a ground output signal, four width ground output signal. Now we are going to use FSM techniques to implement these designs. We have declared two variables or we will call it two registers present state and next state registers and we have parameters parameters which basically defines the state of the state machines now on reset we will assign the ideal state to the present state else the next state will be our present state so this code is basically going to be a sequential logic. This is going to realize into registers. Now we are going to implement or we are basically going to code the next state logic. How will the next state logic will be implemented? So this is basically a purely combinational logic here which will defend on the present state. So if the present state is idle or basically when the device is out of the reset, during the reset the state is idle state. So once the device is out of reset it will start from the idle state. So it will start sampling the request, the input request in this idle state. So when the request 0 is asserted, the next state will be as 0 else if request 1 is asserted it will be as 1 request 2 as 2 and request 3 when it is asserted it will go to the next state which is as 3 else it will be in this ideal state now when the fsm is in as 0 state the fsm comes in as 0 state when request 0 is sampled as 1 when the request 1 is basically asserted so in as zero state, we will sample the next request. So if request one is high, then we will go to the as one state. If request two, we will go to as two. If request three, we will go to as three. If else, if request zero is still asserted in the next clock cycle, also if request zero is still asserted, it will be in the request. It will be in the state as zero. Else, if none of the conditions are satisfied, that means none of the request is asserted, it will go into the idle state. Now coming into the S1 state, when the FSM comes to S1 state, in S1 state basically, S1 state that means the request 1 is serviced and after once basically the round as per the round robin scheduling, the request 2 should be serviced. So in as funny state, we will sample for the request 2. So if request 2 is asserted, we will go into the next state as 2. If it's, if request 2 is not asserted, we will see if the request 3 is asserted, we will go to request 3, we will go to state 3. Else after request 3, we are going to suppose we are going to suppose to service the requester 0. So we will sample the requester 0. If requester 0, we will go to S0. Else after requester 0, our as per our round robin algorithms, the next requester which should be 
this should be sampled or which should be serviced is requester1 so if requester1 is asserted we will go to s1 state else we will go to idle state once we are in the s2 state that means we are basically servicing the request2 then we will when we are in the s2 states we will basically see if requester3 has asserted the in when we are in the request s2 state the next priority is basically to sample the requester 3. So if the requester 3 is asserted, we will go to S3 state. Otherwise, after requester 3, the next priority is requester 0. So it will go into the requester 0, it will sample the requester 0. If the requester 0 is asserted, the next state is S0. Else, if request 1 is asserted, it will go to S1 state. If request 2 is asserted, it will go to S2 state, else it will go to idle state. And similarly, when we are in the S3 state, we are going to sample the request 0. If 0 is asserted, we are going to S0 state. If 1, we are going to S1. If 2, we are going to S2. If 3, we are going to S3. Else, we are going to the idle state. In default state, when we are in default state, we are going to sample if request 0 is asserted, we will go to S0. If 1, S1. If 2, S2 if 3 s3 state else we will be in the idle state now let, let's see the output logic so the output when we are in the s0 state that means the request 0 is granted so the grant should be for tick b0001 when the present state is s1 that means request 1 is getting serviced and the grant will be 0010. When the present stage is as 2, that means the second request is getting serviced and the grant will be 0100. When we are in S3 state, the third request is getting serviced and the grant will be 1000. Default, the grant will be 0000. So now let's synthesize these designs. To synthesize these designs, just in tools and simulation sections, go to the synthesis section and here select the Yosis and check the show diagram after run and just give it. So actually this is the diagram, synthesis diagram which results after synthesizing these designs. So it is a pretty uh, big diagram but we can analyze this diagram and we can basically analyze gate by gate, flop by flop how the flops and the logic gates are getting realized. So if you want to analyze these designs, you can comment in the section in the in the comment sections to share the very low code and basically the EDA play, playground link. So I can share you the link and you can synthesize the designs and basically you can analyze this. Now let's simulate this design. So to simulate these designs, I have written the Vitlock test bench. So these are the inputs, clock reset request and we have the grant is an output signal. Then we have instantiated the DOT. We have generated a 10 nanosecond clock here. Here we have initialized, reset is asserted initially. Then after 5 nanosecond, we have the reset is getting deasserted and we are basically randomly we are driving the request signal and after some times we are resetting the designs and finishing the simulation so this action is basically to dump the signals into the waveform window so to simulate these designs you can select the Aldic Rivera Pro simulator and just check in the open EP wave after run and just give it.
So let me rearrange the signals in a wave. It will be helpful to understand the or then to analyze the waveforms better. I am going to change the radix into binary so that we can see the how the ground signals is basically granting the requesters to access the memory. So if you see once the design is out of reset at this falling edge all the requesters are high all the requesters are basically requesting the arbiter to uh, to give access to the memory but as per the round robin algorithm the requester first first the, the first uh, access which will get is the requester one so requester one is high here so it will get the access In the next log cycles as per the round robin algorithms the second requester should get the access so the second requester will get the access and the ground will become 0, 0, 1, 0. in the third clock cycles the third requester should get the access and the ground will become 1, 0, 0. and in fourth clock cycles the fourth requester or the request third 3 will get the access Now at this falling age we see that the requester first, second and third requesters are basically trying to access the memory. So when the first, second and third are trying to access the memory, requester first should get the access. In the next clock cycles you see that requesters second requester first, second, third requester is trying to access the memory then it should get the access here we see that third requester here, here the third requester in, in the previous cycle if you see here the third requester was granted access so, the, 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 so, the, so now in the next clock cycles basically the preference is for the fourth requester will get the access so here we will see if the fourth requester is still uh, basically still requesting the access so yes at this rising as clock is the fourth requester is the fourth request is high so the ground the fourth requester will be granted access to the memory now again after the after the fourth it will come to the first so in the in this clock cycles in this rising of the clock cycles it, it, the arbiter will check again for the requesters 0 so if the 0 is asserted the 0 will be the 0th request will be serviced the next row cycles 1 if 1 is asserted the 1 will be serviced in the next log cycles third will be serviced because the third request is asserted but the design goes into the reset the reset is asserted here and the ground becomes 0 0 Hof, this is clear to you. If you have any doubt, please write, write, write them down to the comment sections. If you like the contents, please hit the like button. Also do subscribe the channel and enable the notification so that you get notified whenever there is a new such video. Thank you.